In this example, we're going to be looking at using the array tool in order to create a, a sort of a, a simulation here whereby what we're going to do is we're going to take these table and chairs and we're going to create sort of a restaurant feel here. And we're going to do that from this one sort of group that we've got here. And as I say, we'll be using the array tool to do that with. So to use the array tool, I'll make sure that I've got my group selected here. I'll come up to tools and I'll go down to array. So I'll click on that once. And this is going to be a little bit difficult because of the screen resolution. So I'll just have to move this array tool right up here onto the right hand side. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just press preview. So whatever we do will be displayed in real time in our viewport. So that's important. The next thing we've got here is our, our array dimensions. We've got 10 in our array, which is fine. Uh, it's a one-dimensional array and everything's going to be an instance, so that's okay. But what does the rest of this mean? Well, let's just have a look here. We've got an incremental and a totals. So if I now, along my y-axis, which would pull my 10 out along here, if I increase that value by left-clicking on the spinner and pushing it away from me, you get this kind of strange, sort of weirdy concertina effect going on. Well, that's because we've got 10... Um, objects or 10 instances in this array. So I'll reduce that down a little bit and I'll make that probably, I don't know, maybe three. And then I'll increase that dimension off a little bit more. And you can see here that what we've now got is at a distance of about 450 say, or even 400, you can see that these start to space off quite nicely. So they're incrementally spaced at 400 in each distance. If I went over here to totals, you can see we've got three of them. They're spaced at 400, so the total is 1,200. If I move that back, you can see they still remain evenly spaced, but we're just changing the total distance from the, st from the start object through to the end object, whereas with incremental, it's, you know, the distance between each one is set at 400. So it just really depends on how you want to do this. I can, of course, rotate each one of those as well, and I can incrementally rotate them around 40 degrees, which obviously gives me a little bit more, um, sort of, it breaks up the uniformity of what we're doing here. It's a little bit of a shame that um, I can't actually rotate the viewport around at all, but I'm sure you can see that from the position of the chairs here, here, and here, they are actually moving around and they're moving 40 degrees around each time so in actual fact we're putting quite a lot of randomness into this now so it's, it's looking quite good I'm quite happy with that but we still only have this one dimensional array which means it's just going off down one single line what happens if I want to make sort of more as I say a cafe feel where we've got two lines of tables well I'll need to click on 2d array and I'll need to say that there's going to be two sets in my 2D array. So I've got three in my one dimensional array, one, two, three. And if I now offset in the X direction in my 2D array, you can see that I'm now starting to get this second set of, or second row, or column rather, appear, depending which way you want to look at it, of tables appear. And they are obviously still the same as the first set. So you can't completely sort of. Um, get around the fact that you know you're going to be instancing along there but it, it's pretty good I mean if I turn this on three times we've got more of a restaurant feel or indeed a very large cafe the one that always sort of confuses people here is when we start talking about 2d and 3d arrays if I want to sort of add some height into this now I can add height into here by increasing my Z axis and you can see there if I just put this away we haven't increased these off. In fact, if I click OK and just um, rotate round, you can see what we've done here is they've become very stepped. So I'll just undo all of that and in fact come back to my tools array, which will have my previous settings. There we go. And I'll set the Z back to zero. So that's what a 2D array does. And by increasing the Z, you, you create a stepped effect. If I go to my 3D array, and I make this uh, three times, and I now just increase the Z, and I'll click OK, what we've got here now is very much a, a sort of a matrix of shapes. And it, yes, there are times when we're going to use this sort of matrix, 
but it's obviously not going to be every day. But really what I wanted you to do is just kind of understand, if I delete all of these now, is really just understand what was going to happen when you use the array tool. And if I hit preview, what happens if I say, actually, no, I want a 2D, not a 3D. Everything's going to be instant, so you're going to keep everything sort of fairly light on the geometry. And remember, you've got your incremental over here on the left, and that's the distance between each instance. Your total is the distance between the first and the end, so you can really work either way here. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to, I could scale these, and they get progressively smaller, or progressively more squished. Or if I move over to the total scale, you can see here that you've got a similar sort of thing happening, but it's happening over the whole distance between start and end. Let's make this 100 again. It makes, makes my eyes sore looking at that. So you've got the options there to work on incremental or total. It really depends on which way you want to go with that. And then you've got how you want to run your array, whether you want it to be one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or indeed three-dimensional. And remember, always have your preview switched on so you've got a clear idea and a clear understanding of what you're doing while you're working with this tool.